the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and... He is the founder and the president of Eternity Network International. Koinania is the name of the fellowship in Abuja and also in Zaria. We have seen grace in him. Everybody can testify to that. So join me with a clap innovation to welcome to the microphone. Apostle Joshua Selma. Tonight is your night. I'd like you to shout in the name of Jesus. Amen. I was very humbled hearing Reverend Cannon just introduce the fathers of the land. It takes a lot of sacrifice to just come and invest their time. And I'd like us to please honor them. Every one bishop, every one father. Hallelujah. Then, please let me, there is a lot we're going to be doing tonight. Let me request um, the prayer. How many of you have written your request? Okay, please, if you are yet to, if you are yet to write or you're yet to have yours without any, don't, you don't have to make noise, just wave it and there should be an usher or some officials that will just collect it and then we'll trust God to do wonders i like you to in one minute lift your voice and say father tonight is my night for some of you is your night of impartation for some of you is your night of deliverance go ahead and pray Lift your voice, lift your hands, let it be from the depth of your heart. Be blessing and 
and honor and glory and power forever. To him who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb. To him who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb. Be blessing and honor and glory and power forever. Be blessing and honor and glory and power forever. You're not a man, oh, you're not a man, oh, you're the God who opens doors no man can shut, you're not a man, oh, you're not a man, you're the God of every day, no one like you. Like you, there's no one like you. No one like you, there's no one like you. be delivered let everything that should have been in your life now but taken by the enemy no matter where it is it returns tonight please I'd like you to be very sensitive this is not motivation at all at all everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you this is a word for a family everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen hallelujah and there are some of you here you have seen these days in your dreams and your visions you have seen it when anointings and unctions and mantles for the sake of the assignment that God has for you your faith can make tonight that night. Your faith can make tonight that night. I like for your heart to be very open. Because after this service, they will say, Is Saul also one of the prophets? Too? What suddenly happened to you? Please 
insist that this night is my night insist insist that this night i didn't come to just clap for others this tonight is my night go ahead and pray hallelujah and then one of the things i know tonight that god is going to be doing is that everybody and every power that sat your destiny and will not let you go if god of vengeance has won my battle miracles has won my battle for me. I'm a winner, man. I'm a winner, man. A winner, man. He's won my battle for me. God of God of listen please listen to this instruction we are going to shout hallelujah three times just listen just listen we are under a very strong prophetic atmosphere this night and i want you to shout hallelujah three times by the third shout i'd like you to bring out all those under the anointing here i'm going to minister but by the third shout there are chains that it didn't start from you it held people so that they would not lift up their heads horns sitting on the destinies of men zechariah chapter 1 and verse 18 son of man what seest thou and he said i saw four horns these are the horns that have lifted up themselves against israel against jerusalem against judah so that no man don't lift up his head are you ready? Three times from the depth of your heart. Ready? Number one. The Bible says now Jericho was strictly shut. Nothing went in and nothing went out. What sort of a city is that? Nothing can go in and nothing can come out, even if it belongs to you. Are you ready for the second shout? One, two, three, go. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah means Halal Yeshua. It means praise the Lord. Another expression means put pressure on his integrity. Every time you praise a man, he must rise to match what you are praising him for. Are you ready for this shout? This one is not just a shout. This one is Tehillah. It's a shout that can bring down Jericho. Are you ready now? Lord, by this shout, everything that has shot your blessings, that nothing goes out and nothing comes in, let it give way now. One, two, three, go ahead and shout.
I'm a winner man, a winner man. He's won my battle for me. I'm a winner man, a winner man. Upon Mount Zion, the Bible says there shall be deliverance and even holiness. Then the sons of Jacob shall possess their possessions. Brought in on every handwriting and every ordinance that spoke against us. Now, before we sit, please bring them out. I decree and declare that everything sitting on your destiny that will not let you go. There are mothers here you have cried for your children. I come by the rod of a higher priesthood and in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, I command fire upon everything that is not of God. In the name of Jesus. 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 Release families. Release businesses. Release destinies. Release families by the power of the Holy Ghost. Again, I declare that every spirit that will not let you go, it must go for you now. It must go for you now. It must go for your children now. Moses stood before Pharaoh and said, Thus saith the God of the Egyptians, the Hebrews. He says, Let my people go that they may go and serve me. I decree and declare whatever has held you that will not let you go on each other hear the word of the Lord it leaves you now it leaves you now it leaves you now Wherefore God has so highly exalted him, the Bible says, and had given him a name. That name is an office. They said that at the mention of that name, every knee must bow of things in the heavens, of things in the earth, and of things under the earth. If there is anyone here who came with a crutch inside or outside and a to walk lift it up now lift it up now if there's anyone who came here with a crutch or an aid lift it up now and begin to walk lift it up now whether inside or outside lift it up and begin to walk lift it up I'm seeing one there walk lift it up lift it up and begin to walk I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that everything again I say that will not let you go let it go for you now and for all of you who are out here every power that has held you we stand under the corporate anointing here in Onisha we declare no matter how long it has held you leave them now Hear what the Bible says. It says, now the Lord is that spirit. There are many spirits, but this one is that spirit. And that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Let there be freedom now. This is one conference tonight by the grace of God. 
that you will not forget in a hurry hallelujah praise the name of the lord for everyone who is out here i ask them to bring you out because right now in the name of jesus christ i declare every spirit that has held you or your family down go now we bring the authority of this kingdom that we so represent and in the name of jesus we declare liberty now and every door that was closed by reason of these influences we command that they go now god bless you please return them to their seats please be seated god bless you just help those under the anointing i'll just exhort for a few minutes and then we'll just begin to pray for the sick ushers look at me let me teach you something you can just pick them gently the ones who are okay are fine and strong they can go but those who especially the ladies you can just guide them gently and then they'll be fine don't just drag them just pick them give liberty to people are we together if we can have kjv otherwise this is fine just king james if that's fine let's just use that throughout it says thy people shall be willing in the day of your power there is such a season called the day of his power and it says in that day god's people shall be willing willing to do what willing to serve him willing to live for him willing to allow the holy spirit find expression within a territory in the day of thy power thy people shall be willing there is something about the power of god and the spirit of revival please pay attention all through scripture and then through modern history we read of times and moments in history where there was such an awakening such a move of the spirit where the power of god found visible expression within nations within regions within territories and god seemed to use ordinary people in our generation we have read about people that we call god's generals men and women both within this nation and outside of this nation who were marvelously used by god they brought great glory to the name of the lord all through their lifetime and you see the way god works listen carefully is that every territory must have apostolic and prophetic voices that help to preserve the dealings of God. By apostolic and prophetic voices, I'm not talking of titles. I'm talking of the mandate and the call. Are we together now? Any territory that lacks true apostolic and prophetic voices will have several spiritual deficiencies. Among them, a passion for God among them the absence of the demonstration of the power the glory and the grace of god every territory including your territory must have men and women raised by god who will be mightily used by him to sponsor the great move of god many of us today were products of revivals past many of our parents would tell you of times when men like reinhard bonke came into this country tl osborne these were men of fire and power who came and demonstrated the character of the spirit in unusual dimensions can i tell you this all it takes is one generation of carelessness and everything you have labored for can return back to naught. there must always be a people who both promote and preserve the move of god What is a revival a revival is a season of awakening 
a revival is a season of an outpouring of the holy spirit characterized by genuine brokenness repentance where people break down corporately before god admitting that jesus alone is the way the truth and the life and that no man can come to the father except through him a revival is a season of awakening a season of the demonstration of the power of god a season where god decides to make a statement to the inhabitants within a territory that i am still god and i am still all powerful usually what happens is that when there are no apostolic and prophetic voices within a territory there will usually be a gradual decline an absence is that true an absence from the precepts keeping the precepts of god and all through scripture you would read that every time the people of god deviate from the ways of god they surrender themselves to their enemies and they become captives and in their cry and in their pain god will usually send an envoy someone who is a prophetic and apostolic voice who represents the speakings of god becoming an agent of deliverance and when god brings the people out like he did in egypt they cried unto the lord and he raised moses moses went to his half brother Ramesses, who had now become the pharaoh and demanded for an exodus of god's people my assignment tonight is just to share with us as an exhaustion not a deep study the ingredients for a true revival the ingredients that make for a territorial revival if these ingredients are not present there cannot be a move of god within a territory you desire to see the move of god in onisha you desire to see the move of god in anambra state and then the east of the niger there are certain spiritual ingredients non-negotiable ingredients you desire to be mightily used by god many of you have come tonight with hearts open to receive all kinds of impartations usually when you find men who are unusually graced people say these are anointed men of god these are graced men of god but there are spiritual requirements and i hope that within the few minutes that i have to share with you as we prepare to pray that god will place in your hands the keys that really sponsor the move of god in terms of personal revival and territorial revival why because there are many of you seated tonight the destiny of the move of god within your land is upon your shoulder and you have to understand this are we blessed there is a reason why people never see the move of god past religion past church as we call it there is a reason why it looks as though in a whole generation god may just find one two or three people it's not his intent to just have such few people it's not only his desire that all men be saved it's also his desire that all men rise to the fullness of their potential a man of god will say in christ everybody has a high calling there are no low callings in Christ. But I think, respectfully speaking, one of the deceptions that has permeated the body of Christ is the fact that there is no price to be paid to be used by God. Anything of value comes with a price. The refusal to admit and understand that there is a genuine price for revival there is a genuine price for the anointing. You want to access ancient mantles. You want to be used by God in mighty ways. Precious people of God, there is a price to be paid. The first price, if you want to host a revival in your life and across a territory, is the price of consecration and brokenness. Price number one brokenness more than fasting more than prayer you can fast and pray 
as a religious activity brokenness every time god finds a people broken you know what it means to be broken to be broken means to come to a point where you acknowledge the all surpassing value of jesus the christ above ambition above money above titles above preaching above prayer all of these things come out from him brokenness is when we give up our idolatry the service and the worship of men and things and we return to the one true god you will never never find a true revival until god finds the hearts of a people broken god gave man a will and you see even at the expense of your eternal destiny he allows you to make choices and he will respect your choice when satan decided to rebel against god god respected his choice but there was a consequence i can tell you this by the grace of god i am a student of revivals i have studied revivals across continents i've had the honor and the privilege of meeting a few in their lifetime before they passed on there is a reason why many people never experience the move of god across a territory guess how the bible puts it my people even though they are called by my name first requirement they must humble themselves very hard for man to humble himself because we are like the Laodicean church i have everything i am full i am educated i am intelligent i am rich i have no need for anything shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face turning from their wicked ways he says then will i hear from heaven and i will forgive their sins and i will not just stop there i will heal their land you want to see a move of god in your family your jobs your businesses you want to see repentance from idolatry and the worship of other gods it takes hearts that are broken and contrite it takes broken hearts not men of god to bring a revival you can be a man of god but if you are not broken you will never you see we live in a world and we live in times where for many of us jesus is just the wisest option among the many options available so whilst we choose him we still keep other options hoping if there be a rainy day jesus then i keep my intelligence i keep my idols i keep my pride and i watch what happens you will never be able to host god with that kind of disposition the jealousy of god will not allow him to be with anything in your life if he's not absolutely loved, then he will step back and honor your decision until life beats you to your knees and then you call for him again and he's ever ready to come. Most times, you see, people fast and pray, but they just do it for the religiosity of it in hope that they will bribe God by that spiritual activity into releasing power upon them and upon their territory. The motif is already corrupted from beginning. There is a state of man's heart that makes brokenness very necessary. Jeremiah chapter 17, please. We'll read from verse 9 and 10. Jeremiah chapter 17. Please help us, media. This is just an exhortation. Jeremiah chapter 17. We'll read from verse 9 and 10. Please read with me. It's projected if you can see. Let's read in concert. Ready? One, to read. The heart... and desperately wicked please keep that scripture there we'll go shortly to the next verse this is the a verdict from the mouth of the lord that the heart of man no matter how sincere it looks that there is a component in the heart of man that if not vetted by god there are tendencies in the hearts of man you see the way the tendencies of the flesh work is that they require atmosphere and opportunity to manifest 
just because they have not manifested does not mean it is not there you may never know that you have pride you may never know you have lost just because an opportunity has not provided for the manifestation of that state it does not mean it is not there who would have known that a young innocent shepherd called david will be the one to kill someone tomorrow and carry another man's wife you would have looked at that young man that is the kind of young man who all want to be a pastor in your church that is the kind of young man every lady here would want as a husband however that was a murderer right there in that bush so before you surprise yourself god says come let me vet you and you say lord based on my parameters i think i am all right and he says you need to understand something there is no process of time with me i am both alpha omega i see tendencies so before you destroy what i want to do with you come and submit yourself and let the maker make you the heart of man you don't have to be wicked it is a state of the fallen man you never knew that titles matter to you until the day they gave you one and then someone forgot to call you that title and you are even surprised yourself wow so this is the reason why i can't sleep you never knew that money can mean a lot when you are poor don't say you are humble you don't have anything to 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 contrast pride with you see for instance There are no limits to the tendencies that are in the hearts of men. So every time we come to God, Lord, anoint me, use me. He says, I want to use you, but not this version of you. There is something I must do to you. I must make you. I must break you. Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 1. The first five chapters, we see a true prophet of God, not a fake prophet, not a false prophet, called Isaiah. He began the book of Isaiah by prophecy. Isaiah chapter 6 please verse 1 and then we'll return back to this scripture to wrap it up the first requirement for a revival both personal and territorial brokenness from chapter 1 to 5 we see him prophesying if you are told Isaiah as a man of God that something is wrong with you he will insult you and say go and look at the track record of my prophecies and all that I'm doing but then the Bible says in chapter 6 and verse 1 in the year that King Uzziah died it says i also i saw the lord isaiah saw the lord sitting upon a throne he saw the train of his robe because in ancient times the length of the train of a king's robe was a reflection of his majesty and in this case he said the train of his robe to the temple and then isaiah was broken by himself and here was his verdict a prophet he said woe is me I am undone this is not condemnation this is awareness in the presence of the Holy God you know you have met God when you see something to change in your life if you claim you met God and you go back with nothing that requires change it's not the God of the Bible you met this is where I have a problem with many many supposed divine encounters I have met Jesus I will share with you my story let me tell you if, if the Jesus of the Bible appears to you it will take you more than one year to be back as a normal human being again the first thing that happens to you in the presence of his holiness you will be aware of the extent of your filth and inadequacy it's not condemnation that is the beauty and the power that comes with you are we blessed And Isaiah said, I am a man of unclean lips. He said, I dwell amidst the people of unclean lips. You thought God would say, no, 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 that's too much humility. It was true. And he picked, one of the cherubs picked a coal of fire and touched his mouth and says, your iniquity has been taken away from you. Now you are purified. Listen to the next announcement. Who shall we send? Ah, uh ah. -uh. What do you have to say about this man? He's building branches, he's moving forward. Yet heaven is saying, who shall we send? So what was he doing before? Just because activities are happening in the earth does not mean heaven is recognizing it. 
just because conferences are happening apostle joshua selman moving around and preaching does not mean heaven is recognizing it this is where the deception of ministerial activities destroy people you can be advancing men can be clapping and heaven is still saying who shall we send who shall we send who shall we send oh i'm a great man of god who shall we send and for the first time isaiah realized that he was just doing his thing he said here am i and me but the first law is that in the year king uzziah died i saw the lord there's something that must die for you to see in the year that my pride died i saw in the year that my search for fame died i saw you will never see him with those luggages you want to see him the price is death the price for life is death please listen to what i'm telling you you want to host god's power there are certain levels of impartation that you cannot it's not it's not just it's not everything that is transferable there are things that you have to dig your well through death by yourself are we blessed you want to speak over a territory and you want the entire angelic um angelic family to back you you want to speak and principalities and powers who hear no it will take more than english and more than good dressing it takes death you ask the sons of skiba they most likely have attended a few lectures and a few conferences and they said we adjure you by jesus whom paul preaches brokenness listen to me brothers and sisters god is calling us to a higher and a deeper level brokenness where at the end of it all you want is jesus not church not man of god not titles not fame you know the end of your brokenness when the only thing left is jesus not jesus and fame not jesus and power give me you everything else can wait give me you i hope i'm not too late lord give me you lord give me you lord give me you lord give me you when i began my journey with the lord i will continue to say it my intention was never to be a man of God. My intention was not fame, recognition, power. All I wanted was to know him with all my heart. I desired him more than preaching. You can use God as a ladder for fame. Because you hear that men of God sit in front. That motivation would drive you to 40 days fasting. From day one, you were already wasting your time. If God shows you mercy in that fast, he will lead you to the correct scripture that resets your understanding. There are many of you seated here. Whilst you watch us come with the protocol and you watch the men of God, that ambition, you desire to also sit in front. Let me advise you on time. You must submit and allow the Holy Ghost purify that motif. In priesthood, there is honor. But that's not the motivation. Till today and till forever, I love him more than preaching. I love him more than fame. You've heard me say it. I will cancel ministry 1,000 times. Preserve my relationship and his presence. There is nothing in my life, and may God forgive me if I'm lying, but there is nothing in my life today that I cannot surrender to him. Absolutely nothing in a heartbeat. And you believe me, this man standing before you, these things have been tested. God is not a fool. When you speak like that, you will test it. Abraham, take now thy son, thine only son whom thou lovest. 
Go and offer him the mountain. You get the glory. You get the praise. You take the honor. I just want to say thank you. So we in my life. Be glorified, be glorified in my life. Be glorified, be glorified. You want to see the move of God in Onisha? The first key is not just to say, God, come. The first key is to become like the woman with the alabaster box. She took her pride, she took her pain, she took her wealth and broke it at the feet of Jesus. She didn't pour some and kept some. When you love business more than his presence, you will never see him come. When you love ministry more than his presence, when you love anointing more than his presence, whether Jesus is there or not, once there is anointing, you are interested. Am I wasting your time? You must value the presence of God. You must value your time of intimacy with God. Your time alone with Him. Can I tell you this? With all due respect to those co-laborers in the gospel, if a major part of your life is on the pulpit, you are in trouble already. A major part of the life of a minister must be behind the veil. That is what gives power to what you do here. I love, I love. I love your presence. I love, I love. I love your presence. I love, I love. This was how I began my pursuit. I was not looking for ministry. I was not looking for preaching. I was desperately touching for Jesus. Desperately. Then, you've heard my story. The night he came to me. King of Kings. I know he's alive. Number one, because the word of God says so. But number two, I have seen him. The resurrected Christ. He didn't follow a door to come in. He came. When God wants to come, nothing stops him. Off. A door is for you, not for him. When Jesus came into my room, never said a word, yet I heard everything he was saying. That was when I Realize in the realm of the spirit that you do not have to talk to speak. That light is also a language. The entrance of thy word giveth light and understanding to the symbol. Now listen very carefully. I lay down flat on the ground like a dead man. I'm standing before his majesty. This is the man preachers stand to represent every Sunday. My goodness, do they know who he is? Jesus, not an archangel. He stood before me. How I did not die. The only thing I can tell you is that it's like it's the son standing before an ant. And after a while, he stretched his right hand towards me. And a beam of light light that no human being can stand close to and survive that light entered me all of it when it entered me it left the next time I took my Bible I saw things that I never learned what is this 
what is happening to me your grace has found me just as I am empty handed but alive in your hands your majesty majesty forever I am changed by your love in the presence of your majesty I share this with you for a reason it's not to brag because many of you I'm explaining to you the encounters you have been having and to let you know that this spirit of revival coming upon your territory is real I have met many of the saints that have departed now that is not the basis of our confidence the basis of our confidence is scripture but I can tell you in one of the encounters the Lord came to me and said son from today I give you my presence as a gift and then I saw this angel standing he said he will walk with you and I said what is his name and he said he's called the angel of the Lord's presence that's what is responsible for these things you are seeing I'm explaining it to you so you don't think everybody is some false prophet somewhere no 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 But it takes hunger in one of these encounters I was speaking with a man who came to me and he was talking to me and when he was done he turned and was going and I called him I said sir you did not tell me your name he turned back to me and smiled and said Paul and he turned and kept moving you see this is an election of grace this is why we do not boast there is no place for the flesh you know it is God that is transforming you because it leaves a deposit of humility in your life you are aware of your sheer inadequacy outside of his hell hallelujah are we together now so when you hear apostle Joshua Selman it's not because there is anything in, our, in, in us by our own strength our sufficiency is of Christ who has made us able ministers able ministers hallelujah are we blessed now so the first key is genuine brokenness you must get to a point where you love God more than money not just that you had that when you come to God you make clean money so you came to him because you don't want to make dirty money it's still idolatry If he asks you to shut down your business for his presence, can you do that? Hmm. If he asks you to shut down your reputation for the sake of his majesty and glory, can you do that? Sorry about that. If it's not in your presence, if it's not from your hand, If it's not by your spirit, don't let me have it. For everything I need is in you. If it's not in your presence, if it's not from your hand, if it's not by your spirit, don't let me have it. Come and make my heart your home. Come and be everything I am and all I know. There's a prayer now. Will you search me through and through? 
Nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. Everything. You're my treasure, my priority. Who can compare to you? Great is the measure of your royalty. Oh, morning star, you could be on everything, everything. Lord, you are. Hear me, man of God. You want God to do much with you? Forget about ministry and focus on his presence. That's how to be in ministry. You must love his presence more than preaching. I love him from the depth of my heart. If he never blesses me, I owe him my life. It is true. This is not just some man of God talk on stage. Believe me. You want to find power with God? You want God to use you within a dispensation? My brothers and my sisters, it's more than laying on of hands. It's more than a bottle of oil. The price for life is death. The price for all of God is all of you. Not your money, not your offering. You can give God your offering to carry that nonsense. It's your heart I want first. This is the key that controls superior dimensions of the power of God of revival. On it shall hear me until God finds men and women who can be broken, men who can hold on to the four horns of the altar without shame and say, Lord, this is your boy coming to you. They call me their man of God, but your boy is here again. I'm right here where you met me before you lifted me no matter the lifting I'm not stupid I still realize and God says you are doing this for me you are ready to step into another level you want to see the power of God in your churches you want to see the power of God as you preach it is not by gimmicks no There's going to be a great awakening. There's going to be a great revival in your land. There's going to be a great awakening. And everyone who calls on Jesus, they will be saved. Hear me? every time the move of god is about to happen in a territory there are two spirits that are always released within that territory personified in two men number one is called enoch enoch represents the spirit of intimacy and hunger it says an enoch walked with god the seventh man from creation Genesis chapter 5, I believe, and verse 24, thereabout. Enoch walked with God. Not Enoch built churches. The greatest testimony is that Enoch walked with God to the point where he was not. Preachers, let us not let ministry become an idol. You want to command power? Some of you, God is speaking to you. You have been busy preaching. From the day engagements came, you left him. You have been working for God. And yet you stopped working with God a long time ago. 
many of you your prayer groups intercessory groups you started as men with hunger at the back of a tree but now that they've identified you you started preaching here and there you don't care it doesn't matter let me move my destiny forward you say brokenness God is calling you there are many of us to repent is not a word for sinners to repent is how we are transformed realign back to the standard many of you are crying don't be ashamed of your tears I want to tell you what happened in your city by prophecy while men slept the enemy came he cannot sow when you are alive he said awake thou that sleepest while men slept you know how people sleep satan occupies them with activities that are outside of christ just keep making the money i'm not saying there's anything wrong with that just keep making the fame just keep adding credentials and then the enemy steps in and begins to plant seeds seeds of rebellion seeds of spiritual laxity he discerns that there is a family that should carry the next prophet over on each other and very quickly he plants a seed in that young man some of them the devil destroyed their destiny by sending them abroad they had no business going anywhere but he relocated them fast they called it breakthrough like Saul of Tarsus they went out of the will of God can I tell you this look at me one of the reasons why God is organizing this conference this year you may not know he's honoring the cry and the covenant of those who died serving the purposes of God you are the covenant keeping God you are the covenant keeping God listen your territory is full of the history of men and women who live for the gospel some of them died and never had that reward that is the burden that came on this man is you sometimes you don't even know what is moving you and God says no I must find a witness in Onisha the blood of someone is speaking and saying lord arise there has to be a move of the spirit the anthem of our nation says that the labor of our heroes past shall not be in vain there are missionaries who serve god they never tasted of the honor of priesthood and they went Reverend Canon, you are crying, but let me tell you the burden that is on you is more than just a man trying to make a name, it's prophecy. Many of you here, you are walking, you just think you are moving, but there is an ancient prophecy driving you. That thing making you not to sleep when others, when others are sleeping, you cannot sleep. It's more than you, it's more than an ambition, it's prophecy. Enoch is crying within your territory. The spirit of intimacy where are the men and the women who will hunger after god dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye Pray, pray, pray for your destiny. Salas kade bas kana kata branda kete kato, kete branda kata pako tos koto pray kete kene kata. The phase of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.